we have the desktop over here and we have two metro apps we're jumping right into the middle of this thing and we're going to backtrack any second now but uh, we wanted to show you some of the new things that you can do uh, with Metro and the desktop all together. Mainly we wanted to see if we could capture the blinking orange arrow that has been annoying the crap out of everybody that has tried this. So here it is. When you go up here in the corner, where's the, where's the big orange arrow? Oh, it disappeared. It's like a leprechaun. It's like, hey, we're going to show them this big orange arrow. There we go. And then this goes over here. I don't want that there. Let's get rid of that crap. And then how about this? We'll put, hey, keep you. Yeah, I don't want, whatever. Open up one more Metro app just to show you. Let's get photos. Yeah, pretty. Right there. Yeah, there we go. So you got to have up to four metro apps on was metro we're not allowed to say that word it's not what it's called yeah you can have up to four um start screen apps on at the same time and you can have 50 50 splits which is one of the things we complained about last time so it's, yeah let's go ahead and do that here let's go to 50 50 now we have 50 percent over here and 25 25 on the other side this is my new emb <laughs> <laughs> all right so let's go ahead and take a look at Windows 8. There it is! <laughs> <laughs> the leprechaun shows itself. Okay. This has been coming up, and I, we don't know why. I mean, it's like, Go move away. your mouse cursor all the way into the corner, and then move down the edge, and then click. It and wants it, us to do this. Yeah, just it's annoying. But it wants you to do exact. If you don't do exactly that, you're screwed. But it comes up randomly, and it's like obviously I know how to do that. If I, I mean we're we're in the middle of positioning, you know, four columns of apps, and it's like let me teach you some basic things. And it's like, <laughs> um, uh, mm, uh. Oh yeah, you guys can move stuff. Of course, you can make your different groups of you know things. You can you can grab multiple at the same time. But this is stuff I didn't really care to look over here. Oh, we made a new name the group. I don't even care. I never come here. So look what I just did. Um, first off, the new things that have been added to the start screen. Now we have um, a nice cloud-powered slideshows, or a, a nice. We have nice cloud-powered slideshows on your um, on your on your. I guess what is your lock screen? So when it's locked, you come and it's not just a, a picture or whatever. It can be a slideshow of all your pictures, and it looks kind of pretty. And it can either pull from your local hard drive or it can pull from the cloud. They've added a lot of cloud functionality to Windows 8.1. They're almost making it so that um, your operating system is in the cloud. And then wherever you sit down, that's essentially a terminal for your OS. And by cloud, you mean SkyDrive, which is only SkyDrive, which is a repeat of the Internet Explorer situation from about 10 years ago. Uh, because if you want to use Dropbox, it ain't happening. Yeah, let me go ahead and pull up SkyDrive here. Get rid of everything else. Now, SkyDrive, um, just like you said, it's it's Dropbox, and it's completely controlled by Microsoft. Now, what you can do here is you can sync your profile and a lot of your files as well to the cloud. And if you want to log in somewhere else, it will grab all the icons that are representative of your documents and whatever other things you have backed up to the cloud. And then whenever you access a document or an app, it will download it then. So, you know, if you log in somewhere else, it's not downloading everything at the same time. You're not going to have to wait several hours. You can just log in and all your stuff will show up, your personal settings and all that. Um, the thing that troubles me about this is that, just like you said, it's SkyDrive, it's controlled by Microsoft, and all your stuff is going to be on a Microsoft server and not your own server, so it's removing control from the end user and giving it to Microsoft. However, it's going to be extremely convenient, and we do already trust companies like Apple and Google to do similar things, so we have to think about that as well. This is really similar to the Apple Me stuff that they're doing with iCloud and all that kind of thing. Over here, we've got, of course, all of our applications. Uh, this is very similar to Android. Yes. But this is not anything exactly new. I thought it's interesting. When we go to the, the four-screen view, it's basically the mobile view, like the, the Metro app view is very similar to what you get on a Windows phone or tablet. I love the fact that you can do half and half. This is so much nicer now, and we can even open up. Uh, if you want to read something like, you know, uh, over here, if, you've got, if you want, you want to look at the weather here, and then you want to open up your desktop here, well, you can, you can do that. I'll just go and grab the desktop. And see, now we have the desktop over here. You can be working on something like we've got Open Broadcaster going, or you can work, open up, you know, Word or Photoshop and work on that stuff over here and then have, you know, uh, an app or two. You can even have multiple apps and then the desktop. Resize them. It's pretty cool. Um, the other thing we have is um, an all-app screen on the start screen. So let me go ahead and open up the start screen again. And see this little down arrow here? That's all your apps. That's extremely handy. Yeah, we haven't played around with this as much as we should have. But another thing that's really nice about this is you can set this up so that it displays uh, your desktop apps first in line. And then the, I guess, the start screen of the Metro apps or the modern apps. So that's, that's, we keep saying Metro, but it's modern. The modern apps are displayed after that. So you can set it up to do that. If by modern you mean less functional. <laughs> it's bubbly and things you slap. Um, and, you know, we're really talking about this for a desktop environment. So not really talking about this in relationship to a touch environment because it actually is pretty intuitive and, well, 
we were going to review this on a Surface, but apparently the Surface you can't upgrade right now because <laughs> there is, quote unquote, a situation. <laughs> it just gets bricked all the time. Yeah. Animated uh, backgrounds are pretty cool too. We don't have any of those, but I will show you um, how, let's go to the desktop here, and I will show you a few things that we can do to make the transition from the start screen to the desktop a little less painful. Number so, one feature for me is boot straight to desktop. And we're going to show them how to do that. I'm going to right click on my start bar and then I'm going to click on properties and there's a new tab here. So take, take a look here at the navigation menu we have now. Um, we can turn off the damn charms and apply on that and look, oh my god, there's no more charms popping up and driving me crazy on my desktop. You can turn those off. Thank you so much Microsoft. Also, you can have it go to the desktop when you sign in. Thank you so much, Microsoft. This is a big deal for me, showing the desktop background on the start page. So I'm going to go ahead and hit apply and then bring up the start page. For some reason, mentally, it feels a lot different now. It doesn't feel like two totally different environments. It feels like it's still pretty damn different, but... Now imagine if we could see our windows behind the shaded... You know, I was like now that would confuse people. <laughs> My windows are in the background, but I'm confused. Yeah, that would really confuse people. Um, then, if you have multiple displays, you can set it up to show uh, start on whatever display you're using. So, if you're over here accessing another one and you want to open up a start page on that, you just you know click start and it'll go there. Um, this is also very very handy for those of you who are desktop users. Show the apps view when you start. And this is also interesting. They've also integrated web search into the search. It's actually very pretty. You can turn it on and off, so that's nice. But I'm going to go ahead and turn all that on so you guys can see what it does. And uh, we can list the desktop apps first, like I was telling you. Now check this out. When I open up my, uh, from the desktop here, click on start, open it up, goes right here. It's much more like old school Windows with big bubbly icons because you still have your apps all here. It's actually a little bit weird, and you can't drag these around and organize them like you can up here with your modern apps. Um, speaking of dragging around and organizing, we can resize these things to make them you know, smaller. Major technology here. Look at that. The technology that's gone into this. I want these photos to be nice and large, so... Oh my goodness, look. Wow. Look what I just did. This is so amazing. <laughs> Do me a favor and start typing control panel. All right. I misspelled it, and hey, it still came up. Control panel. Look at that. It's doing stuff in control panel. Yeah, so we, the, the search is much improved. It really is. Like a way, it's, it's the way it should have been in the first place, like before making you go and click on, is it a setting? Is it a program? I don't know. So this is just the way it should have been in the first place. Let me show you what else is really cool with search. Um, now, when you uh, start typing, it'll search the web as well, if you have it enabled, so... Can't type on this damned laptop. That's the last thing I searched for. I needed her profile to get her specs, so that's up there first. It remembers your search history. Very much like Google, but it's using the Bing engine. But let me show you how this works. Let's say I want to look for uh, new shirts, which we have some new shirts and all that stuff. New shirts, hey, it's not going to our store. Hmm, it's terrible. What we'd have to do is start do another search for... And in order to search, I just start typing. I don't have to click on anything. Epic Pants. So what happens if I just search for Epic Pants, what's going to come up? Hmm, I wonder. Not our website? I, there it is. There's our website. And yay, our shirts are in stock! Yes! Hey, girl shirts. This is all new. I, I haven't even seen this stuff yet. And beer glasses, we've got mugs coming in like a day. I'm selling crap. Let me get back to the video. Now, I don't use any of this nonsense. I use Start as Back. Uh, I'll throw that on here before we leave just to, you know, show you guys how to really, really get away from uh, this on a desktop, get away from the start screen on a desktop. Also, health and fitness is a new thing. Also, Messenger is gone, and now it's all Skype, so. Yeah, I use Skype because of Skype. Yeah. <laughs> Skype, Skype, Skype. And Skype is also um, tied into the NSA. I should just be aware of that. Yeah, so you can personalize your fitness and have all your health data, data sent to the NSA. All right. <laughs> <laughs> With the 8.1 updates is IE11. Yeah, and Explorer 11, we, it just opened up in the uh, desktop the environment. But hey, you can cloud sync with this now. And that's something that Firefox and uh, Chrome have done for quite a while. So now we have the similar functionality. The, the similar, this similar functionality here. Meet the new IE, same as the old IE. Also in our uh, photo app, we have um, some features that should have been there in the first place. Like now we can actually edit these photos. This is just so not intuitive, but we can crop them and edit them. There we go, edit them and do some basic fixes like, oh, look, I can make this brighter. And 
Why would I, this is so basic? Everything's so basic. This can be handy if you're trying to do something quickly. You know. Wow, it's the interface that we saw in the Microsoft Courier tablet promo for a thing that never existed. That was years ago. That was years ago, but there's the interface. I'm glad they actually used it. <laughs> All right, back to back to the desktop where we belong. All right, so we're gonna get some work done on the desktop. First off, uh, Shadow Copy's back, right? Right? Is no, it? No, no. They, they didn't bring Shadow Copy well, back why? because they're cold-hearted bastards. <laughs> why would they do this? But the functionality's still there in the background. The functionality's there in the background, but you have to schedule your own snapshots if you want it to run daily like it used to. Instead, Paul Thorat, you know, he's sort of the Microsoft super site guy. He he had this marketing thing that he got from Microsoft to copy paste and so this is what he said but it's really just copy paste marketing dribble from Microsoft file history is essentially a modern version of the previous versions functionality that debuted a decade ago in Windows Server 2003 that is of course shadow copy file history caches or backs up different versions of your documents and data so that you can go back in time and recover previous or deleted versions of those files yeah that is horse pucky Horse pucky, sir. <laughs> what a bunch of horse feathers. Now, one thing that file history in Windows 8 and 8.1 does that is that is different and useful is that it can back up your documents folder to another drive. Shadow copy doesn't do that. That's cool. That's good. Shadow copy snapshots the whole drive, and it, it in at least in Windows 7, it would do it twice a day, every day, uh, or I guess weekdays. Um, and it would keep like 30 days of snapshots or ever how much disk space you had. It would use like 10% of the disk by default. So it's really handy. Shadow Copy is awesome. File history is really not a lot more sophisticated than XCopy and Atrib. I mean, you can keep more file versions. But I mean, I was doing this with a batch file in 1989 with XCopy and Atrib. This is Microsoft gently encouraging you not to save anything outside of my documents or the desktop. Because guess what? It's not going to be backed up. But let's talk about the functionality that it still is there with uh, Shadow Copy. I mean, it's not like it's gone. Oh, where, let me get back to the desktop. Go away, desktop. There yeah, we so go. we want to show you this amazing app. <laughs> we're just going to totally derail this thing where we're well, talking about you, Windows 8.1. <laughs> you can't say app. People will think it's a start screen, a uh, modern app. It's an application. Uh, what's it called? Uh, Shadow Explorer. There we go. Shadow. So we download this thing called Shadow Explorer. You guys can just type it into Google, download it. Now, you still have to schedule your daily snapshots. But this will at least let you get at the previous version's functionality that was there in, in earlier versions of Windows. Where did, where did it? Oh, there it is. There we go. Hey, there it is. And then hit the drop-down menu, and it's like, oh, look, previous versions. Yeah, it's totally Shadow Copy. Yeah, this is, it's using, it's and like it, using Shadow Copy. It gives you a little configuration GUI for you to fart around in. I mean, that's kind of nice. There's not really much you can configure at the moment, but hey. Shadow Copy functionality is still in the operating system. Some mid-level manager was like, oh, let's cut that because we don't need that. No, no, that was a really good feature. <laughs> that was one of the things that sets it apart from Linux and, and OS X, this it's, snapshotting thing. And, and now it's, it's gone. It's, so. not, it's not like cutting it is it making the system any faster because they left the freaking functionality in, so it's not actually faster. <sighs> it, Just you, the GUI is gone. You might be able to say that it's a little bit faster because you're not taking the daily snapshots automatically, but I never noticed that anyway. And if you're running such a crappy machine that you do notice... My, like 5400 speed hard drive, maybe you'll notice, yeah. My heart bleeds for you. Better X menu here. Quick access to all the stuff here. I'm just going to install... Uh, um, start is back. Yeah, I'm going to install Start is back. Yeah, we're going to take a look at Start is back. So I just installed uh, Start is back and uh, Rejoice. Yay. Start is back plus works. Different files will have the different uh, the, the carrot here. And uh, Word will have this as well, but I haven't opened up any Word uh, programs yet, so or Word documents yet. But, you know, it'll bring up your recent, and that's really, really handy. Uh, it's very configurable, but uh, you guys can explore that on your own. Any Windows 8 users out there that don't like Windows 8.1, Microsoft's going to abandon you in less than two years. Yeah, in two years, the support is going to be gone for Windows 8. Um, you really do. I mean, I really think it's a good upgrade. Um, I'm, I'm still not sure how I feel about all the cloud syncing. It's extremely handy. Do I trust Microsoft? I just... I want the features a lot, so it's like, that's eh, so handy. Can we make it to where it backs up to my secure SSH server? I no, would really no, like it. No, I won't it. let you do that, no. Can't, why? But we, uh, <laughs> they, oh. won't, they won't allow it. It has to be Microsoft servers. Um, I'm sure that, you know, there's probably a, a, an app or something that will let you use your own. I mean, we could create something, I guess. That would be handy. Yeah. But you, it won't. it's not going to back up your, you know, your account. That's going to be a tech Kickstarter. It's like making it appear and work like a local drive and then 
using the user experience virtualization thing to happen through SSH. Yeah, we need to Kickstarter that shit. One fun thing I liked about Windows 8 was when you would open something in like the picture previewer or the PDF previewer, and it's like, okay, I'm done, and you drag it down to the bottom, it takes you back to the start menu. It doesn't take you back to the desktop where you were. It's like, gee, thanks. Yeah, but this one, it takes you wherever you preset here. Navigation. This is, this makes the thing so much nicer. But all this functionality was already in start is back, so yeah. whatever. I mainly uh, upgraded the Windows 8.1 for the pulchritude, the pretty slideshows and stuff. <laughs> That's really vain. <laughs> I just want Windows to run fast and stay out of the way. And give us back shadow copy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's no excuse for that. Why would you do that? Why would you do that? I mean, are you just, you're, are you trying to just make me personally completely insane? Why would you do that? I'm using Windows 8.1 now um, on most of my machines with Start is Back. And uh, this way, I, I, I do actually like it better than most older operating systems. I'm having some driver woes here and there, but like this microphone, they just released a new driver for it like right before we made this video. And now we can make the video with the new drivers, but all the drivers have to be re-signed and that sort of thing, and that's kind of a pain in the ass. But um, all in all, I think Windows 8.1 is slightly less terrible. It really is. It really is less terrible.